Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with West Ham. Now it has been a busy summer transfer window but we have had to come back incredibly early in the season. It is only the 23rd of July so the transfer window is still ongoing and things are still moving. So as you can see it is the 23rd of July and the first game's already been played. Chelsea beating Manchester City and today we go against Cardiff away from home. But we've got to have a look at some of them transfers. So we'll start with some of the outs first. Dejan Jovalich has found himself going to Chelsea for £39 million. I was a bit disappointed to let him go, but once you've seen some of the signings, you'll sort of understand. Next up was Felipe Anderson. He's went for £36.5 million to Cardiff City, which was, I thought was a really, really good deal. He's 29 years old now. He was not in our plans, particularly as we have changed in our system away from wingers. And to get that much money from him that I could reinvest back into the first team squad was EO okay with me. Tetier we ended up selling for £31 million which I think is a bit of a bargain for Marseille but we did sneak a 50% of next sale clause not next sale of profit next sale clause because I can imagine this guy absolutely smashing it at Marseille and then earning a big move to Roman City or a Barcelona or something like that. So he is one of the players who has had to be sacrificed. I would have liked to have kept him obviously because he's such a good player but if we're not using wingers he's no good to me. Next up was our backup goalkeeper, Pau Lopez. He ended up going to Middlesbrough for £31 million. Now, it wasn't a sale I was interested in making, but because of the value of the transfer and the ability to reinvest that into the first-team squad, I just thought I had to take the money. And finally, in terms of transfers for money that we've made, Edgar Alizalde went for £12.5 million. He came in for £9 million to replace Pong Ricic when we sold him in that January transfer window. And he never really found a home. He, he wasn't part of the first 11. He was always a backup. And we've signed someone better. <laughs> but as you can see, there's been a lot of loans. An absolute load of loans. The main one I want to talk about is Gonzalo Campos. Obviously, he is probably going to be one of the best wingers in the world. And I just could not bring myself to selling him when he's only worth 13 million. So he's going to spend the season out on loan at Napoli and hopefully increase his value dramatically and if we don't revert back to the winger system we can look to sell him on then. But in terms of incomings let's talk about some of these. Will Norris is going to be our new backup goalkeeper. He's absolutely awful but he's English so he doesn't count towards registration and yeah we just needed someone just to cover the sticks for when Craig Davis is either too tired or he's injured. Next up was Dario Padillo that was signed for 2.9 million from Brazil. He looks like a decent uh, centre back. He looks like he could become part of the first team squad. He does have five star potential and he does have well rounded stats for a centre half. At six foot and only 18 years old, hopefully he can grow into the role as he spends the season out on loan at Vancouver. Next up is a German Chazaretta from a Velez was signed him for 9.75 million pounds. A defensive midfielder. He. <sighs> I'm a little bit regretful of making this signing, a little bit. I signed him when I wasn't expecting to splash the cash on the sort of players that we have done so far in this transfer window. He's gone out on loan. Who did he go on loan to? He went on loan back to Argentina. So hopefully he can improve. Obviously some of his mentals are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it just all depends on how he improves and whether he can get back into the first team squad for West Ham. And now we'll move on to some of the big summer transfers. Luis Felipe joined us from Paris Saint-Germain for £29 million. He is our new best centre-half. Not by a country mile, but by a decent margin. He's going to be starting at centre-half alongside either Rob Holden, Panzo or Oxford. That is still to be determined. So we've still got our three English centre-halves in the first-team squad. But he's going to be the main man. £48 million pounds got us Aaron Martin. Now this is a sign and I wasn't too pleased with either. These are all sort of marginal upgrades on our first 11. But to get massive upgrades to our first 11, it doesn't exist on the game yet. The regents haven't developed to that point where signing them would be a big increase in quality for our first team. So this is the kind of signing that we're going to have to make to make the sort of incremental improvements that we're going to have to make if we're going to challenge for the Premier League title. But he is definitely a step up on Tony Lardo. He's incredibly well-rounded. Every area, technically, mentally and physically, he's sound as anything. But for £48 million, you'd maybe expect a world-class centre-back. Is he a uh, world-class centre-back? A world-class left-back? Is he that? He's probably the step below that. But hopefully he can give us the goods. I hope so for the money we've spent on him. 
Now this guy, Fabio Silva, £50 million. This is not a signing that I regret whatsoever. He is going to be one of the best strikers in the world, hands down, and he is a big part as to why Dejan Jovalic ended up leaving the squad. He is going to be our first choice striker alongside Yaramillo, probably with Moise Keane and Alexander Isaac backing them up. But he's just fantastic. 19 years, uh, 20 years old, he was 19 when I signed him. He's got four caps for Portugal already. He was a mainstay in the Porto first team last season, scoring 20 goals in 26 games in an AI control team. That is absolutely fantastic. So I'm expecting big things from this lad. He's not injury prone, which is the first thing I checked. And yeah, he's going to be absolutely fantastic, hopefully. And there's one more huge transfer to talk about that hasn't quite been agreed yet. He's got a work permit coming through either tomorrow or the next day, depending on if he gets it, which he will, because he's on a lot of money. And it is Danny Olmo. He's going to be playing behind the defence. Him and Zerlek are going to be our attack and midfielder centres. And he's just incredibly well-rounded as an advanced playmaker. You know, that's the sort of role I'm going to be expecting him to play. I might switch it up and play him at Tatton midfielder, depending on which one gets us the best results. And which one returns the best results for our strikers as well, which is something I'm really looking forward to seeing. But yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. £50 million is what we're going to pay for Danny Olmo. Actually, it might be a bit more. £52 million is what we're going to pay for Danny Olmo. And I cannot wait to get him in the squad, honestly. So obviously the transfer window is still ongoing. I'm not actually sure when it shuts this year or why we're starting so early, whether there's an international competition or something I'm not aware of. But on the 4th of August it's when it shuts. Um, and even with the Danny Olmo signing, we're still going to have £57 million to spend. So if I find someone, um, my next like sort of target area will be central midfield. This is how this is how I imagined the first eleven starting before our signings came in. In terms of the big ones, we've got Aaron Martin who will definitely be first choice, and we've obviously got Danny Almore who will definitely be first choice in at attacker midfielder centre. But this is how I picture the team starting as we start the season. The only weak link here is De Paula. He is a he is a natural at the box to box midfielder role, which I will be playing, and he will be an absolutely fantastic centre midfielder in the future. But for right now, if I could find somebody who's as better than him for a reasonable price i would probably go for it but i haven't found them yet so our first game of the season against cardiff this is how we are going to line up craig davies in goal rob holden and louise louise felipe in center half obviously as was spoke about when we were speaking about louise felipe rob holden might not hold on to that first 11 spot it all depends on how he performs Wagnerman at right wing back Lucas Toussaint playing in the defensive midfielder role and Aaron Martin as left wing back. Sandro Tonali and De Paula in centre midfield with Jerlek as our attacking midfielder. Haramillo and Fabio Silva leading the line. Let's pick our subs. Emerson, Aaron Creswell, Reese Oxford, Declan Rice, Ronaldo Vieira, Moise Keane and Brent Beckyard are going to be on the bench. I'm really disappointed that I'm not using Brent Beckyard. I was so pleased when I signed him for £20 million, but he's still only 18 he not be, not being a first eleven team member is not going to harm his development too much. I hope, and he of course can play in that attacking midfielder role should he be needed. So yeah, let's get into the game against Cardiff and see what sort of side they have assembled in the four or five years we've been playing this game. A lot of players there who I don't know all that much about. I know David Brooks is a decent attacking midfielder for Wales. Is he? From, was he always Welsh? No, was he English and then declared for Wales? I'm not sure. Yeah, other nationalities English. I think he was, I don't know, maybe he's got a Welsh cap in real life right now. I'm not sure. But definitely on last year's game, I think, I had him as an English player. But yeah, I'm looking at the squad and there's nothing I'm too afraid of. So let's get into the match and see how we'll get on. So as the season starts and it is a new system and a new tactic, which I have not tested yet for FM19, we're gonna. it's going to be a growing process. You know, over the first 10 or 15 games, we might not actually hit the ground running with the sort of system we're playing. I just don't know how it's going to play. So this really is a shot in the dark at trying to improve our league position as Jerlek goes for a wonderful strike there. But it goes out for a goal kick, does it? So I'm going to try and not to panic if things don't go our way early on, which I cannot guarantee will happen. It's going to have to be a big season from the likes of Wagnerman. I'm expecting him to do about 80% of the job that our inside forwards were doing last season in terms of wing player. And I think he's got the legs for it. We'll see if Aaron Martin has do. As he's through on goal, he takes the strike. The keeper saves it and he couldn't come and collect. Corner for us. Jerlek takes it. It's cleared by the Cardiff City defence. Can he get the ball back in a second time? No, he gets dispossessed by Stevens. 
and the Cardiff City players are breaking, but Wagnermann can cut it out. Sandro Tonali coming forward now. Wagnermann is not there to help him out on the right-hand side, but Jihal Romillo puts it in. Sherlock is there, and he gets his goal as he returns from loan from last season. He was on loan at Valencia, and he comes back into the first 11 and gets himself a goal on his return. Sandro Tonali does well here. You expect him Wagnermann out on that right-hand side, but I believe he was over for the corner as Jurlek comes in, gets his head on it, champion. And that's it, half-time, 1-0 West Ham, Jurlek in the 31st minute, giving us the lead. Let's kick off the second half. 60 minutes in now, and that's been quite a quiet game, actually. Wagnermann is looking like he's struggling a little bit, so we'll get Emerson on as his backup. That's another area where I was looking at in the summer to maybe get somebody in to back up Joshua Wagnermann and move Emerson on, but there hasn't been any interest in Emerson whatsoever over the summer, so... It's not a problem position for me, as we'll get Ronaldo Vieira on for Sandro Tonali, as the time is just completely ticking away. Absolutely nothing happening in this second half, which worries me a little bit in terms of our creativity going forward. Jurlek can come off for Brent Beckyard for the last couple of minutes or so, three minutes at a time. We are going forward, or we're not. David Brooks to break for Cardiff City. There's a lot of space on the left-hand side for Bennett. It's going to take a good performance by Rob Holden here to block it off. Emerson can clear but they come forward with Watmall. Smith down the right-hand side, he gets a ball in. We need to clear this, Bennett's there. And he hits the post, we were very, very fortunate there. 15 seconds to go, and it looks like it's going to be a win for us, should we keep things tight at the back right now. Um, disappointing first performance, I would say. Three points is always welcome away from home, especially. But it is going to take some time for this system to become effective. And it's definitely going to take some tinkering from myself. Looking forward to the next episode, I'm actually going to come back around, I think I'm going to come back for the Watford game in the middle of August. We can wrap up the transfer window as it'll be well shut by then and it gives us a couple of games to review as well and then the next episode after that will hit the Champions League running. Just looking actually when the Champions League group start stage draw is, it's the 25th of August, so what is the game before that? It's the Brighton game, so I'll tell you what, we'll come back for the Brighton game and we'll do the Champions League draw in the same episode. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and if you're enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.